Every year, about 2 million Americans receive a cancer diagnosis. Well, that news obviously causes anxiety and fear about the worst possible outcome. One cancer expert recommends patients take specific steps to calm these fears. And CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson explains. Often, when a primary care physician shows concern about a lump in the breast or an elevated PSA, they may mention cancer and recommend tests. Before jumping to conclusions, patients should see a cancer specialist. Dr. Michael Sakaris recommends getting a biopsy because chances are you'll feel relieved. One study for people who had swollen lymph nodes that were suspected to be cancer actually found that only 17% of those people, when they went to an oncologist, got a formal diagnosis of cancer. If the biopsy indicates cancer, Dr. Sakaris recommends getting a second opinion specifically from a doctor who focuses on that type of cancer. Part of his reasoning is that a second opinion dramatically downgraded his own mother-in-law's diagnosis. He retested her for everything, and it turns out she didn't have stage 3 lung cancer, lung cancer that had spread. She had stage 1, confined to one area. Research shows that result is rather common. There was disagreement 20% of the time. So one out of five people received the wrong diagnosis from their local pathologist, and that resulted in the wrong treatment 7% of the time. It's helpful for a family member to accompany the patient on doctor appointments to help take notes on what's said. That's because studies show memory can fail us. When recall for information about treatment and side effects was assessed in 69 older adults with cancer, respondents were correct only 23% of the time. And in the age of social media or going to Dr. Google, be wary of online medical information. Another study concluded that 67%, so two-thirds of cancer information that was shared on social media was accurate, but one-third was inaccurate. While cancer can be a big deal, follow the expert's advice and make sure you have a reliable diagnosis before getting too concerned, since many cancers are survivable. Well, Lori is here with us uh, for more. And so, Lori, t tell me, it seems that the cancer seems to be more su survivable today. Absolutely. It's not the death sentence anymore. Why is that? 100%. The reason may surprise you. It's because so many fewer people are smoking. It's amazing. The number of people who are smoking in America today is about 12%, still too high. But just, you know, back in 1977, Gordon, it was... Um, 45 percent of people and then also people were allowed to smoke inside everywhere so that just goes to show you how devastating smoking is for cancer not just lung cancer but all cancers so we have seen a dramatic decrease in cancer deaths the rate of cancer deaths still about 600,000 Americans die each year from cancer that's terrible but the percentage of people has gone down by about a third since 1991 so if you take 100,000 people today compared to 100,000 people back in 1991, 30% fewer are dying from cancer today. So not just because fewer people are smoking, but also because of improvements in medical treatments. So things like advanced treatments for cancers that have metastasized, the immunotherapies, but also advanced surgeries to get to tumors that used to be impossible to get to, like ones that were in the base of the skull. And then the other reason so many people are surviving cancer today is because of early screening. It cannot be overemphasized how important it is, how life-saving it is to find that cancer early. So what, are, so what are some things that people can do to have the screening to do just that, to the find it early? Right, there are, some, there are some really fantastic screenings that doctors recommend people get. There are six main ones. Colonoscopy for colon cancer, then also the mammogram for mm. breast cancer, the PSA test for prostate cancer, the pap smear for cervical cancer, then we have the mole check for, for skin cancer, and then lastly, the low dose CT scan for lung cancer. Now, this is geared mainly to people who do smoke or have smoked in the past. And it's mm -hmm. interesting to note that the recommended age to start some of these screenings 
is now lower than it used to be because more young people, Gordon, are being diagnosed with cancer than before. And by young, I mean younger than 50. So now mammograms are now uh, recommended to start at age 40. Also, um, PSA, or rather colonoscopies are for age 40. And then PSA tests for African-American men age 40 if you have a relative who is diagnosed with prostate cancer under age 65. Well, what can th pe th people do, uh, average people do, other than please don't smoke? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm old one. enough to remember there used to be a smoking section in the airplanes, which is, it's, <laughs> which is it, ridiculous. It, today is just mind boggling that, oh. that that was the supposed healthy way to fly. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I assume avoid processed food and yeah, those things. Absolutely. Uh, what else can people do? Absolutely smoking. This has been uh, labeled as a group one carcinogen. Also, there are two more group one carcinogens, alcohol and processed meats, cured meats. A lot of people don't realize this. So alcohol, a lot of doctors will say, hey, none at all is what I recommend, none at all. But the official recommendation is also extremely low. It's one drink a day for women, two drinks a day for men, and by a drink, they're talking about 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, or one and a half ounces of liquor. That's not very big. That's not, well, that's not what, what you what see. What cancer does alcohol cause? Almost all of them, especially oh. breast cancer. So it's particularly concerning for women. And remember, we've seen this resurgence of the mommy wine culture, you know, for women. And it's extraordinarily damaging to our health. Well, well, what's the key ingredient in processed meat? So if you're looking at a label, right. what are you looking for? What you really want to avoid are almost all of them. A lot of them, uh, it's the nitrites and the nitrates. But really, even the processed meats that say nitrate, nitrite-free are problematic. But uh, what you really want to avoid, and you know, this is back to school season when moms and dads are packing those lunches, it's the deli meats, it's the lunch meats, it's the cold cuts. We have to avoid those. Also, hot dogs, wait, wait, wait. bacon, If I, if I go to sausage. the store and yeah, I get, Gordon. They, the, they've got the yeah. roast turkey yeah. breast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason has, is not yes. preserved. Yes. And so I, you slice that and that's bad? No, so the great, that, that's a great point. So, uh -huh. what, so what we want to do instead of buying the cured meats that are in the packages in the deli section mm -hmm. is to go home and make your own chicken breast and slice it up and put it on your kids' sandwiches. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's messy. Try a wrap. So if you want to do tuna salad or chicken salad or something, put it in a wrap. It's easier for the kids to eat. But yeah, those lunch meats, also bacon, my first love, bacon. <laughs> very bad it's the cured meats now again most doctors will say none is what we should all aim for but the official guidance is no more than one pound per week of these processed meats other things like you well, said i can stick to a pound a pound yeah yeah so yeah that's only a few ounces a day uh, other things like you said processed foods uh we want to stay away from sugar also uh some other things that we should be doing exercise and uh, all the things that we've heard, heard for so long. All the lectures we've had for yes. a very long time. <laughs> but yeah, the smoking, our, our, the processed meats, and the alcohol are the big three. I'm fine with preventing and living healthy. Is there any possibility of a cure? Absolutely. I've spoken with, uh, I'm really glad you brought this up. I've spoken to so many doctors, gastroenterologists in particular, that say if people got their colonoscopies on time when they're recommended, colon cancer, which is the third type, leading type of cancer death, could almost be wiped away, completely cured, because you can get those polyps, which are the precancerous uh, growths, uh, during the colonoscopy. Also, I happen to be a melanoma skin cancer survivor. Again, it's, uh, I, they say it's cured because I went and got my mold check, and they found it early, and they were able to take that that growth out before mm -hmm. it had spread to the lymphatic system where it can travel throughout your body and grow somewhere else. So really they say the cure to cancer is getting it early. Okay, well good information. Laurie, thank you so much for My the pleasure. insight.